Okay, moving on to the next team in the SEC that we will be going over today. That will be Nate Oates and his Alabama Crimson Tide, who I have finishing in third place in the SEC. And I totally understand what you guys are saying. Zach, Alabama third? Isn't that a little high? And I totally understand. Last year, I think some of you guys could have made the argument that Alabama, even though it was Nate Oates' first season, they were a little disappointing when you considered all of the talent they really did have. And now Kyra Lewis, who is the starting point guard last year, he was just drafted number 13 overall by the New Orleans Pelicans in the draft. He's no longer here. So Alabama this season is going to have to get some contributions from some new players. But at the same time, I just really like the way that Nate Oates was able to flip this roster quickly and especially have Alabama at a very, very high talent level entering this season. Now, we'll start off with the guys that return. The one guy for Alabama that really just impressed me last season was Jaden Shackelford. He was an all-SEC freshman member in 1920, and he's likely going to lead the team in scoring after he averaged 15 points per game as a rookie. And it's funny because Shackelford was literally, I feel like he was either the 98th or the 99th uh, ranked recruit in ESPN's Top 100, and I always remember seeing his name, and for a guy that was ranked that low, he was awesome last year, and I feel like if you're an Alabama fan, you could expect him this year to get better and better and better, and then they also bring back John Petty, who I feel like has been in college forever, and he provides you some even more shooting. He's 6'5", and he was second team all SEC last year. He shot 44% from three, and in his career, he shot 39% from three. They also bring back Herb Jones, the 6'7 defensive specialist, and he's going to round out the starting wing core for this Alabama team. He doesn't really bring that much offense to the table, even though a lot of Alabama fans are going to remember him last year in a game against LSU, knocking down two free throws with one hand uh, with like a broken hand or something. It was a crazy moment. Alabama basketball fans remember exactly uh, what I was talking about, but he's arguably the best defender in the SEC and one of the best defenders in the country. He's a guy that can guard multiple spots on the floor, and even when he gets beat, I love how he's able to recover and make a good defensive play. Now, unfortunately for Bama, Herbert Jones was the only good part in a defense that really wasn't great last season. Alabama was one of the weaker defensive teams in the SEC, and this season, I'm a little worried for that defense because Nate Oates provided and last season that Alabama doesn't love to play that traditional big man. And I think that was only confirmed when the two traditional big men in this Alabama program last year in Galen Smith and in Javen Davis, both of those guys transferred. And now when I'm projecting Alabama's starting lineup, Jordan Bruner is going to be the starting center. And I do think he's a guy that, you know, a lot of people throughout college basketball in the offseason really wanted to be on their squad. I think he could be one of the best newcomers in this SEC. And you pair him with guys like Herb Jones, John Petty, and Jaden Shackelford, I do feel like ultimately that could be the right formula for this Alabama team to succeed going forward. They also bring back Alex Reese, a guy that's super experienced. He's like a 6'9 senior. He could shoot the ball a lot for a big man, and I do feel like having him play the five could be a really entertaining lineup to watch for this Alabama team. And that's the thing about Nate Oates, which is why right now, if you were to ask me, Zach, do you want to buy stock in this Alabama team? I think for me, the answer would be yes, just because the way Nate Oates directs his team, the way Nate Oates prioritizes the style of play for this Alabama squad is really impressive to me. Because if you're a high school basketball recruit, why would it? You want to play basketball at a school like Alabama. And I know it's Alabama. It's known for football. I get it. But Nate Oates seems like a kind of coach where players really enjoy playing for him. And also the style of play, the positionless go, go, go tempo uh, style of basketball that Alabama plays. I think that is something that is very attractive to kids on the high school basketball cir uh, circuit. And the number one question for me with this Alabama team, and I ultimately I think the answer to this question is going to determine just how good Alabama will be this season, is the point guard position. And the first name that comes to mind is Javon Jelly Quinterly, who transferred in from Villanova. And if you remember, 
However, during his one season at Villanova, he really just was not very good at all. Jay Wright barely, it seemed like Jay Wright didn't even want to play him on the floor. And if you remember, originally Quinterly was supposed to be a guy that was committed to Arizona, but he decommitted after all the Sean Miller stuff was going on. And I feel like Javon Quinterly could be one of the key pieces to this Alabama team because I totally understand that people say, he just wasn't good at Villanova, and at a school like Alabama, even though they're a big brand that has a lot of guys, I just don't know if Javon Quinterly is good enough to be the starting point guard for this Alabama team. That's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is... Okay, he just needs a change of scenery. He was a top 40 recruit for a reason. There were many people who were around the Villanova basketball program that really liked what he was able to do. And I do think that with Javon Quinterly and Jaden Shackelford and John Petty, that does have potential to be one of the better backcourts in all of college basketball. The other underrated thing about Alabama that I haven't even mentioned yet is last year, Right before the season started, Alabama lost two key guys who were supposed to contribute to injuries, and that's James Rojas and Juwan Gary. And both of these players tore their ACLs before even playing a regular season game for this Alabama team, and I do think that really did shorten up Nate Oates' bench and really did force him to shift his rotations a little bit. During the season, James Bolden, who was the transfer from West Virginia, and to be honest, I think if you ask most Alabama fans, they would tell you that he was pretty disappointing compared to the relative expectations for him and I feel like luckily Bama was able to get that uh, production from Jaden Shackelford my question is this year now that defenses are uh, a little more aware of Shackelford which other guy for Alabama is going to be able to step up and for me one of the guys that I think could do that is Josh Primo a guy who is a 6'6 freshman from Canada and there are a lot of people around the NBA draft Twitter that are a big fan of his and I do think if he could find his way onto the court Primo could be a solid player for this year's Alabama squad the problem is is that Nate Oates could really play as many different players as he wants. If he wants to play 12, 13 guys in a rotation, I do feel like this roster has the personnel to do it. It's just, I don't know, besides the top five or six of Quinterly, Shackelford, Petty, Herb Jones, Bruner, and Primo, or, or excuse me, and, um, and Reese, I don't know who exactly else is going to be able to find their way onto the floor. And I feel like Nate Oates is not really the coach that cares about where exactly you've been recruited, you know, what you were told when, you know, you got to Alabama. Nate Oates is the kind of coach that is going to play each and every player that he thinks gives his team the best chance to win. He doesn't care about where you're being ranked and where you've been rated recruited wise. So I do expect Nate Oates and his no nonsense attitude to rub off on this Alabama team. There were flashes, even though Wes, season was disappointing for Alabama, but I think to be honest, that's what expected. That's what should be expected when you have a first year head coach. And I feel like it was going to be a long wait to transform this program to the soft gritty eh, of Avery Johnson to the, all right, we're legit grit and Nate Oates wearing the hard, uh, hats like uh, they did at Buffalo. So I'm really looking forward to see what Alabama could do this season. I know me having that in at number three is going to be a little bit surprising, but at the same time, I believe in Nate Oates and I'm betting on one of the best coaches in the SEC.